What is up, everyone? Corn O'Keefe back yet again. And as the title implies, I'm bringing you Raditz versus Naruto. But before I fully get down to business, I do have a couple things I'd like to go over first. When it comes to Raditz, I will mainly be using the manga and data books or guidebooks. The anime will only be considered as long as it does not fully contradict what is shown in the manga. And as for Naruto, I will be using Teenage Naruto throughout the war arc specifically up until he obtained six paths powers and went up against Madara Uchiha. So I will not be including Naruto when he faced off against Kaguya, Toneri, or Momoshiki. And I will mainly be using the manga along with data books and guidebooks for Naruto as well. And just like with Raditz, the anime will be considered as long as it does not fully contradict what is shown in the manga. So without further ado, let's get down to business. I say we go ahead and start off with Raditz himself. And like always, I'll be going over attack power, durability, and speed for both characters, and then I'll go over their hacks and skill later on in the video. Starting off with the attack power of Raditz. If we remember anything about Raditz, it's that he was easily able to dominate both Piccolo and Goku in the early Saiyan saga. Heck, Piccolo himself admitted that him and Goku would not be able to defeat Raditz individually. Keep in mind, this is the same Piccolo who could casually obliterate the moon around this time in the series, and he obliterated the moon within two seconds while still wearing his weighted clothing. Goku at this point is easily comparable if not slightly above this Piccolo. And this is backed up even further by the fact it's actually confirmed in a guidebook that 18 year old Goku at the end of the original Dragon Ball could actually shatter the moon. And this was during Goku's fight with Piccolo Jr. And Goku and Piccolo both have completely surpassed their end of Dragon Ball counterparts at this point. So it does make a lot of sense that Piccolo can casually flick his wrist and obliterate the moon within two seconds. Same with Goku at this point in time. In fact, the blast that Piccolo used to casually obliterate the moon with within two seconds has actually been calculated to be 69.69 .69 zettatons, which is planet level. Piccolo, around the time he obliterated the moon, had a power level of 322 while wearing his weighted clothing. Raditz had a power level over 1200. But for the sake of simplicity, let's say it's 1200 on the dot. Divide 1200 by 322 and you get a little over 3.7 which means Raditz is at least a little over 3.7 times more powerful than Weighted Piccolo when he casually obliterated the moon within a couple seconds. And as I mentioned, that moon feat has actually been calculated to be planet level. However, if you're personally not a fan of that calculation, and you personally think it's only a moon level feat, that's okay because the fact still remains Raditz himself is almost four times stronger than that Piccolo. Which means even if you choose not to use that calculation, Raditz would still be almost four times stronger than someone who can casually obliterate the moon. Now that we've established where Raditz stands in terms of attack power, let's go ahead and move on over to speed. How fast is Raditz? Well, as we know, Raditz was able to dodge Piccolo's Special Beam Cannon from almost point-blank range. The Special Beam Cannon is actually superior to the casual attack that Piccolo used to obliterate the moon within a couple seconds. 
which means logically the special beam cannon should be faster than the casual attack that Piccolo used to obliterate the moon within a couple seconds. However, for the sake of simplicity, let's lowball it and say it's the exact same speed as Piccolo's casual attacks. And it takes light about 1.3 seconds to reach the moon from the Earth. As calculated by my good friend Benjamin Hellfire Productions, Raditz dodging the special beam cannon should put him a little over 28% the speed of light, almost reaching 29% the speed of light, aka relativistic speeds. Radix can also easily keep up with both Piccolo and Goku and even blitz them at certain points in the fight. So yeah, Raditz, in terms of his reaction time and short burst combat speed, is easily reaching the relativistic ranges. Now, let's go ahead and discuss durability. The durability of Raditz should easily be around the same level as his attack power. Heck, Raditz was able to take one of Piccolo's key blasts point-blank to the face, and all it did was singe his leg hair. And this is actually the same key blast Piccolo used to obliterate the moon. And yet, Raditz took it point-blank to the face, and all it did was singe his leg hair. Raditz was also able to take and completely cancel out Goku's full-powered Kamehameha. Heck, it took a charged up special beam cannon with a power level over 1300 to finally put this guy down for the count. Overall, Raditz is almost four times stronger than somebody who can produce 69.69 .69 Zeta tons. And if you don't agree with that planet level calculation, he's still almost four times stronger than someone who can casually obliterate the moon. His durability is easily around the same level as his attack power and he's easily reaching a little over 28% the speed of light, aka relativistic reaction time and short burst combat speed. Now, let's go ahead and move on over to Naruto Uzumaki. Starting off with the attack power of Naruto. As we know, Naruto with only half of the Ninetales chakra was casually able to fuel the Shinobi Alliance with at least three times the amount of chakra that Kakashi Sensei would have normally. And there's literally thousands of ninja left on the battlefield at this point in time. But we can keep it simple and lowball it to 2,000 ninja. Now, something really important to keep in mind here is... In Naruto The Last, it only took 100, maybe 200 ninja. For simplicity's sake, we'll just say 200 ninja. So, at best, it took 200 ninja to fuel a cannon that was capable of teleporting away the moon and completely obliterating it. And yet, Naruto, with only half of the Ninetales Chakra, was casually able to fuel at least 2,000 ninja with at least three times the amount of chakra that Kakashi Sensei would have normally. So you divide 2,000 by 200, and Naruto, with only half of the Ninetales, would at bare minimum be 10 times more powerful than a cannon that could easily teleport away the moon and completely obliterate it. And this is backed up even further by the fact, it's actually confirmed in a data book that only half of the Ninetales can easily turn the world to ash. And this isn't the only data book that suggests something like this about half of the Ninetales. There's actually another data book that says only half of the Ninetales has earth-shattering destructive power. As we know, Naruto would go on to obtain half of Hagoromo's power. This is the same Hagoromo alongside his brother who literally created the moon and moved it up into orbit. And the amount of energy required to do this was actually calculated to be 549.61 Zeta tons, which is planet level. And even if you split this power between Naruto and Sasuke, it would still grant both of them 274.80 Zeta tons each, which would still be planet level. And just like I mentioned with the planet level calculation for Piccolo, if you're personally not a fan of this planet level calculation for Hagoromo, that's okay. Because the amp that Naruto received from Hagoromo 
still allowed him to go toe-to-toe -to -toe with Madara Uchiha after Madara had absorbed the Ten-Tailed Beast. And keep in mind, the Ten-Tailed Beast was compared to the size of a small planet while not even complete. Madara also spread the God Tree which was calculated to require planet level energy. Moving on over to speed, how fast is Naruto Uzumaki? Well, as we know, Naruto, even before obtaining half of Hagoromo's power, was actually fast enough to dodge the third Raikage's fastest punch. And he even dodged a punch from the fourth Raikage from point blank range. Keep in mind, it's confirmed the fourth Raikage actually throws his lariat near the speed of light and his dad, the third Raikage, should at least be equal to his son, the fourth Raikage. And these near light speed lariats aren't even their fastest attacks. Naruto being able to dodge the third Raikage's fastest punch, along with dodging a punch from the fourth Raikage from point blank range, should at the very least make Naruto 60% the speed of light, aka relativistic plus. And keep in mind, this is only KCM Naruto. Heck, when he obtained half of Hagoromo's power, it was actually confirmed that the reaction time of Naruto's Six Path Sage Mode is actually equal to or greater than Madara Uchiha himself after absorbing the Ten-Tailed Beast. And this is the same Madara who is capable of reacting to Eighth Gate Guy who was literally running so fast he was warping space around him with his pure speed alone. And Madara, with only one eye, was somewhat able to react to this guy, and it's confirmed Naruto has just as good, if not greater, reaction time than that of Madara Uchiha. And this is just his base six path sage mode, not even amped with the Nine Tails Chakra. And everything I just said could actually be considered a lowball. Seeing as there's actually a calculation that puts KCM Naruto at 72 times the speed of light for being able to outpace the Raikage like he did. And I can completely understand if you're not personally a fan of 72 times the speed of light. However, I did want to bring it up nonetheless because 60% the speed of light may actually be a lowball when it comes to KCM Naruto, especially when it comes to his other higher forms. So just keep that in mind that 60% the speed of light for KCM Naruto and his higher forms only being relativistic plus could actually be considered a lowball. So, at bare minimum, Naruto is easily reaching the relativistic plus ranges in terms of reaction time and short burst combat speed. Moving on over to durability, Naruto's durability should easily be around the same level as his attack power. Heck, Naruto was easily able to withstand being slammed by one of Obito's chakra arms. And Naruto's shadow clones, who are all relative to Naruto, were actually able to trade blows and take blows from Madara's Limbo clones. And these Limbo clones are literally relative to the attack power of Madara himself. And something else to keep in mind is, the force that you can usually exert is usually the force that you can take. So overall, Naruto, even with only half of the Ninetales Chakra, is at bare minimum 10 times more powerful than a cannon that's capable of completely obliterating the moon. It's confirmed Karama with only half its chakra can easily turn the world to ash and easily has earth shattering destructive power. After obtaining half of Hagoromo's power, he was able to go toe to toe with Madara after Madara absorbed the ten tailed beast. His durability is easily comparable to his own attack power. And at bare minimum, he's easily reaching the relativistic plus ranges in terms of reaction time and short burst combat speed. And that basically gives you the gist on Naruto Uzumaki and Goku's brother Raditz in terms of their overall attack power, durability, and speed. 
So it's honestly safe to go ahead and go over which character actually holds the advantages when it comes to attack power, durability, and speed. And then I'll go over some hacks and special abilities. So there's honestly a couple ways we can look at this. One is Raditz is a little over 3.7 times more powerful than somebody who can casually obliterate the moon, along with Naruto with only half of the Ninetales Chakra is at bare minimum 10 times more powerful than a cannon that can easily obliterate the moon, along with two official data books that confirms only half of the Ninetales can easily turn the world to ash and easily has earth-shattering destructive power. And the fact, after receiving half of Hagoromo's power, Naruto was literally able to go toe-to-toe -to -toe with Madara after he absorbed the Ten-Tailed Beast, which was compared to the size of a small planet while not even complete. And the other way to look at this is to go off the calculations such as the planet-level calculation for Piccolo obliterating the moon, or the planet-level calculation for Hagoromo and his brother creating and moving the moon to orbit. Along with Madara spreading the God Tree, which was calculated to be at least planet-level. Now, at the end of the day, Naruto does take the attack power advantage either way you go. If you ignore the calculations for both characters, then Naruto right off the bat is at least 10 times more powerful than a cannon that can easily obliterate the moon. And this is with only half of the Ninetales Chakra. While Raditz on the other hand would be a little over 3.7 times more powerful than Piccolo who could easily obliterate the moon. So even if we ignore the calculations, Naruto would actually still have greater attack power than Raditz. And again, there's two official data books backing this up as well, along with the fact he was able to go toe-to-toe -to -toe with Ten Tails Madara. And if you do choose to use the calculations for both characters, then Raditz would be about 3.7 times more powerful than somebody who can produce 69.69 zettatons, which would put Raditz a little over 257 zettatons. However, this would still be less than Hagoromo and his brother creating the moon and moving it to orbit. Even if you split it between Naruto and Sasuke, Naruto would still receive over 274 zettatons, which puts him above Raditz. And obviously the calculation for Madara spreading the God Tree would easily support the planet level calculation for Hagoromo and his brother creating the moon and moving into orbit. Either way you slice it, Naruto ends up with greater attack power than Raditz. How about speed? Well, it's honestly easy to see. Naruto, even with KCM, is already faster than Raditz. As I mentioned, KCM Naruto is at bare minimum 60% the speed of light, aka relativistic plus. While Raditz is a little over 28% the speed of light, easily relativistic speeds, but still slower than even KCM Naruto, let alone Naruto in his higher forms. And again, you may actually be able to consider that 60% the speed of light as a low ball for KCM Naruto. Because as I mentioned, there's actually a calculation that puts KCM Naruto around 72 times the speed of light and there's also a couple other calculations that my good buddy Hellfire Productions made. One of them actually has KCM Naruto a little over 12 times the speed of light. And his other calculation has Naruto at a little over 3 times the speed of light while in KCM. So just keep in mind that 60% the speed of light for KCM Naruto could definitely be considered a low ball. 
So it's honestly very safe to say Naruto, even while in KCM, is definitely faster than Raditz. And he would just utterly speed blitz him in his higher forms. Moving on over to durability. Obviously, durability is the same as attack power. Naruto has greater durability than Raditz. And Raditz does not have the necessary attack power to break through Naruto's durability. Now, how about hacks or special abilities? Well, unfortunately, Raditz doesn't have any special hacks or special abilities up his sleeve. He can fly and shoot Key Blast, but he really doesn't have any special ability that would allow him to overcome the stat gap that Naruto has over him. On the other hand, Naruto has plenty of special abilities and hacks to bring to the table. For example, his Rasen Shuriken, which literally attacks opponents on a cellular level. Naruto would also have the Truth Seeking Balls, along with being able to summon multiple Shadow Clones, which are all relative to Naruto himself. And thanks to Six Path Sage Mode, Naruto has an unconscious and automatic mastery over the Sage of Six Path ability to levitate. So Raditz being able to fly really won't give him much of an advantage in that category at the end of the day. Naruto would also have way more stamina than Raditz. This is thanks to his large chakra reserves. Heck, he fought for several days in the 4th Shinobi World War, despite the fact he shared his chakra with thousands of Shinobi and took multiple attacks for them. And on top of that, if Raditz does somehow manage to damage Naruto, Naruto will be able to heal thanks to his impressive regeneration capabilities. Naruto is also much more tactical during battle, and a lot more crafty, especially when he's using his shadow clones. So at the end of the day, Naruto has greater attack power, greater durability, greater speed, he has much more versatility thanks to all of his crazy hacks. He literally outnumbers Raditz thanks to his Shadow Clones. And he has more than enough stamina to outlast Raditz. Naruto will easily be able to stay one step ahead of Raditz throughout this entire fight. Thanks to all of the advantages that I just named off. On the other hand, Raditz doesn't even have the necessary attack power to hurt Naruto. He doesn't have the necessary durability to withstand attacks from Naruto. And he doesn't have the necessary speed to keep up with Naruto in combat. Along with having no way to counter any of Naruto's crazy hacks or special abilities. With all that being said, I honestly have to give this fight to Naruto more often than not. But let me know what you all think down below. As always, have a blessed day folks. Peace.